thanks for joining us. You're up to amazing things. Could you tell us a little bit of your background and about the movement you're building, the, the, this, this idea about just architecture? Yeah, so I am originally from Detroit, Michigan. I'm now based in uh, Madison, Wisconsin. And I received my master's degree in architecture uh, from the University of Detroit. And I've been working as a, as a designer uh, since then, so uh, 2006. So I've been in the profession about 14 years. And uh, what I have a deep interest in is uh, the impacts of architecture and urban planning on, on end users. And um, looking at that impact um, in some unique ways. So uh, this idea of just architecture or the just city um, is, is a conversation that's been a while, been around for a few decades, but um, adding a new voice to it, and that's the voice of the community members themselves. Um, and what I've done is I've created this um, way of using hip hop to talk about architecture. Yeah, say more about that. I'm not sure. I'm not sure everybody would understand how hip hop intersects with architecture. Yeah, so I call hip hop uh, modernism's post occupancy evaluation. Right, hip -hop What's post occupancy hip -hop? evaluation? Real quick. What's it's for yeah. non architects? So, as as a designer or an architect, if you design a hospital, after you finish that hospital, you're going to talk with the doctors, the nurses, the building engineers. So the people um, who are going to occupy it, uh, right? Did it work? <laughs> exactly. You want to see how successful uh, it is. You may even talk to yeah. some of the patients about their experience. And the goal is the next time you build a hospital, it's even better than that one. Um, mm -hmm. And what I say about hip hop, um, hip hop was born in these uh, modern uh, ideas, these modern utopias for um, <laughs> for inner cities, right? Mm -hmm. um, so the work of Le Corbusier and some of these uh, modernists that are celebrated unintentionally laid the groundwork that would birth hip hop in the Bronx. Mm -hmm. And what hip hop music is, if you listen to it, it is a unsolicited, unfiltered <laughs> critique of the environments from which the culture was born. Um, yeah, so these are artists who are reacting directly to what, what they're feeling in these concrete jungles, right? In these places that maybe weren't designed for them or weren't designed for, for really the people who have to live there. <laughs> yeah, it, it was this idea that not only, um, you know, we think about the architecture uh, for most public housing projects, uh, what's interesting, the architecture was designed like a crucifix if you look at the form mm. from an aerial mm. view. And this is uh, Le Bouzier's idea of architecture as a machine. He believed that people, once they inhabited the space, you could create a better person if the architecture is a machine. Um, and he believed mm. that this crucifix form, along with all the programmatic elements, would create a better working class citizen. Um, mm. Very interesting way that modernists thought, but hip hop tears all that shit up and just says, this was your idea of urban renewal, but here's the reality of mm. urban renewal. So I, uh, juxtapose lyrics with statements from what architects and urban planners thought they were going to achieve and again show the what they actually did uh, through hip-hop you know right now in the united states um less than three percent of uh, licensed architects are african-american and then less than 0 0.2 percent are african-american uh, women so uh very few of us are responsible for um, designing and building our communities which we all know has a profound impact on whether you are uh, successful or not <laughs> in the long run, right? There's our buildings, our spaces either deny or perpetuate injustices. And um, unfortunately, there's not a lot of us who are um, part of those uh, design efforts. So my goal by using hip hop is to make architecture relevant. And it's not a gimmick. Um, you know, some people think you will just assign a song and dance architecture. Now people will flood. No, we're giving people a real challenge to solve some of these systemic issues that are perpetuated by built spaces. And we're allowing them to explore the, the lyrics of their favorite MCs um, who have given or provided some provocative solutions to some of the problems. So not only does our music critique, but it also provides uh, a glimpse of um, solutions. So with that 3%, I'm looking to raise that number by making the profession relevant and giving a direct charge and ultimately a new vernacular for young people uh, coming into the profession. Vernacular well, do you think, yeah, I mean, I suspect that maybe maybe it's not uh, a cultural thing, like I'm gonna be an architect when I grow up, or maybe it's not um, anything they even think, they don't see anybody that looks like them. If it's only 3% or 0.2% women, you know, it, it helps to have to have somebody you can aspire to be, you know, where's the hero, where's the thing? And, and how do we get a whole generation really. And it seems like that's your movement. You know, you've we've yeah. quit your day job. You're like taking a serious stand and 
and you're yeah. you're you're saying, look, these shouldn't be backdrops or sets for injustice, which frankly, like every single moment of the day right now, it feels like they are. You know, I look at at the stadiums and the other things being used for bad things. <laughs> I totally agree. Yeah, as a profession, you know, we can't be complacent with you know designing those backdrops of injustice. I mean, we have to think of architecture as something beyond bricks and mortar, and, and that's what the just city is. It's looking at design um, beyond bricks and mortar. But what are the policies, um, the laws that are um, housed within our spaces? You know, what's happening in August? What's what's going on with uh, your next step in terms of building a movement, a hip hop architecture movement? Yeah, so we uh, conduct hip hop architecture camps around the country. We've actually done a, a few internationally as well, which is usually a face to face um, mm -hmm. program. But with, um, you know, challenges we're facing right now with COVID, uh, we switched to a digital platform. Mm -hmm. uh, so in August 1st, we're conducting a hip hop architecture camp for 1500 uh, young people uh, mm -hmm. across uh, the United States where we want to tackle, you know, some of the very issues that we've been discussing. Um, you know, how does they, how does their community look now? Why does it look that way? What has their music said about the neighborhood? And then now let's solve it. Let's solve any issues that have been wrapped about or that you have observed. And then let's make a new song. Now that the uh, solution is there, our young people make their own music, which looks towards the future, which is another amazing thing about architecture of education. You are convinced that you can see something that no one else can see. You <laughs> are imagining the future, space and place. You are imagining and getting people to buy into your imagination of the future. You're getting people to understand scale, um, material. You've got, to kind of, you've got to communicate that vision through story, which, which also feels like very relevant to artists and rappers and, and hip hop artists and others, that they're right. telling stories. Like we remember stories, we don't remember facts. And every single program, no matter what city we're in, there's mm -hmm. new conversations that are being uh, discussed as you know, each region in the United States has a different style of, of hip hop, if you will. Mm. And they have different artists that young people are associated with. And they have unique stories and problems that they are responding to in their music. Uh, with Lupe, I mean, he started to describe project buildings and he has a song called Daydreaming. And he gave the backstory about um, daydreaming, um, about buildings in, in the city of Chicago. He told some stories about his dad telling him that if you put all the buildings together in downtown Chicago, they'll become a robot. He said he never forgot this. And wow. he has a song called Daydreaming where he reimagines a housing project building as a robot and he describes each one of the joints of this mm. walking robot with all of the injustices that people face in housing projects so mm. um it, it's very poetic and um again he's providing these foundational pieces for people that are architects engineers urban planners to pick up and um you know use as information for designing a just city you had a provocation you know uh clearly your focus and i think rightly so is is in your location and your place and your culture you know the african-american community and and the needs that we have right now are just significant if we're gonna make this experiment called america work um and it's being it's being challenged for good reasons just structural violence and 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 structural racism what would you say to the global audience who it may not be the same marginalization or oppression or unjust spaces, but I suspect I, I suspect people are grappling with this all over the world. What would you say to them? How how might they think differently about their own communities that they're building, their own cities that they're building, um, in other parts of the world? And hip hop has been defined as a voice of the voiceless, and no matter where uh, hip hop is, it always represents um, that community and the voices within those communities. So similar to you know our music here in the U.S., um, you know I challenge people all across the globe to listen to the music. Um, don't don't just listen to what's happening here in the U.S. Yes, we have you know some international superstars. Well, listen to what the people in your communities uh, are talking about because again, they're um, critiquing. They're stuff. expressing it. Yeah. So um, I know that may not have been the most earth-shattering challenge, but um, again, it's something that I don't think we've done as um, as architects, planners, builders. Um, really listening to what our young people are. We, we create um, places for them to share information. So we have these town halls and these formal meeting spaces where we want them to articulate themselves in certain manners. Um, I say hip hop will give you probably every answer that you want and you don't have to worry about somebody being politically correct uh, with you know other folks sitting around them critiquing what they say or how they say it. Michael, thank you so much. This has been 
Yeah, just a lot of things to take in and, and really exciting just to see what you're doing and the fact that you're kind of redirecting yourself to focus on this full time. <laughs>